Okay. Do 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 Okay. Good to go. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Gambia. It's another sad day, sad in the sense that we are on our own. We are in a nation without leadership. I think by now most Gambians have seen the videos circulating on social media by some nursing officers at either RVTH, Edward Francis Small, or one of our hospitals in the country. It's appalling. It is an indictment of the system and it shows the indifference of this government towards the well-being and welfare of its citizens. By now, if this was, you know, coming in from any other serious country, the government would have put out a press statement that they're looking into this matter and they will get to the bottom of it as soon as possible for the interests of all. Unfortunately, in the Gambia, that's not the case. The government have made a decision that going forward, they will just keep quiet and let the people who do the talking keep on doing the talking. Well, that shows indifference that shows that they really don't care about the plight of the average Gambian. Now back to this video. The video we saw by Miss Kasama, it's not only appalling, it's heartbreaking. Heartbreaking in the sense that no way on earth will a country reduce itself and the dignity and pride of its people to that ebb. Oftentimes on social media, we tend to see, you know, a lot of infant mortalities, mothers dying during childbirth. And now we are being told that our hospitals are not equipped with the bare basics. I'm not even talking about equipment. I'm talking about supplies, gloves, plastic, latex gloves. It's painful. And when someone like Nyang Jai talks about the expansion we are seeing in the country, especially that of road networks, i.e. the Nyomi Hakalang Road, i.e. the Banjul Project, we denounce it. We don't denounce it because we don't want development. We denounce it because we believe that this government happens to have misplaced priorities. The soft side of development, which is the Human Development Index, that's what we need to focus on more. And focusing on the Human Development Index, which is the soft side of development, we will make sure that our people are well-fed, well-educated, and well-taken care of as it relates to healthcare. But unfortunately, that's not the interest of the people who manage the affairs of this country. Procurement, 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 and what type of procurement? Infrastructure, because these are high-ticket items. We're talking about millions and millions of dollars. So therefore, people who are interested in putting cheese on their butter or cheese on their bread tend to give out such projects. But what Gambians need right now is good education, good health care, and a dignified livelihood. 
roads can come later and i think what we want is for the government to listen to someone like miss kasama the vice president of the nurses association or whatever you know association she is part of to show us that what is happening is not what the average gambian deserve and this has nothing to do with 22 odd years of jamis rule this has everything to do with the utter disregard that this current administration happens to have on the people of this country the little resources we have if prioritized can make sure the average gambian lives a decent and a dignified livelihood the little resources that we have if put into good use society will benefit but as it is right now it's few that are benefiting and they're not even benefiting because with all those monies they're siphoning and getting out of these major procurements it's not going to go anywhere the state of the country is beyond Yaya Jame and we cannot keep on blaming Yaya Jame Yaya Jame like I said was an individual or I mean during his tenure he was an individual but he had enablers but those very enablers are still in the system and doing the same bidding they used to do so we cannot change our healthcare system if those people are not taken out of circulation our healthcare system will not be better if those people are not out of circulation what our country needs right now i'm talking about today april going into may we need a concerted effort of patriots to put politics aside come together and decide that our country needs to be salvaged and we also need to hit a new reset button to kickstart a genuine lasting transition that will usher in the new Gambia we all yearned for when we booted Jame out but what's happening in our hospitals it's appalling once again and um, people going there for dialysis are dying because the bare basics needed and we're not talking about machines we are just talking about consumables are not there people are going to hospitals instead of getting better they're getting sicker why because the hospitals are filthy the people who should make us get better are not you know are ill equipped with you know the items that they need we have nurses dying we have doctors dying why because they're exposed why are they exposed they don't have adequate protection in terms of materials that they need to serve us so it's a zero sum the whole society is losing the sick people going to the hospitals die the people that should make people get better in the hospitals get sick all because of corruption all because of indifference all because of lack of sympathy and pride in nationhood it's time we ask this president for whatever is left of his term does he care about the gambian if so let him do something for what is left and maybe save face in terms of his name and for posterity to judge him but right now as it is this country is weeping crying yelling and all we are asking for is for our citizens especially the ones who have been entrusted with power to do the right thing to make sure that the average gambian gets better sorry guys someone said they wanted volume Mansoor yes I've increased the volume and I hope that it works this time all I'm saying here Mansoor especially those in the healthcare system the video we saw today was very bad the video we saw today shows there is no empathy the video we saw today shows that the government should suspend all further public infrastructure projects ie roads and divert those funds into the well-being welfare and education of its citizens that is what our country needs no money is good enough when you have good roads and your citizens are dying no roads are good enough if your citizens are ill educated so therefore to hell with the banjul project to hell with the nyomi project and we all know why emphasis has been put on those procurement ticket items because they're big you're talking about 900 million dollars for one of them it means people are getting monies in their pockets at the expense of who 
not the poor Gambian alone, but everybody else. And this is one thing we need to fight collectively. When someone like Nyang Jai or Madi Jobate gets up and talk about the Banjul project, we don't do it out of hatred. We don't do it out of spite. We don't do it because we don't, we, you know, th that we want the people of Banjul to suffer. Or no, we know that this country cannot afford those and this country happens to have higher priorities than fixing those roads. Yes, we need roads, but our priorities is survival. Our pr priorities are enlightenment, education. Our priorities are access to opportunities, making sure the Gambian happens to have an equitable social contract. Then you can give us the hard side of development, which is roads and infrastructure. But for now, we want to be decent, dignified human beings. And the way and manner in which our citizens are dying in our hospitals shows gross negligence on the part of government and to a point criminal negligence. Criminal negligence in the sense that this country happens to have what it takes to treat its people, but it's going in the wrong places and is going into wrong projects. So that is criminal negligence. When a Gambian dies out of childbirth in 2021, something is fundamentally wrong with the leadership of this country. When oxygen is not available during an operation, something is wrong with this administration. When power goes off in the middle of a surgical operation, something is fundamentally wrong. And that is criminal negligence. And people need to start paying for their negligent attitude towards the welfare of the greater good of Gambians. Gambians cannot continue to live a life where people without a moral conviction, where people without the courage of conviction and conscience cannot understand that whenever we have a Gambian at the morgue died because of complicity, it is criminal. And the government and officials in the government, be it at the Ministry of Health, be it in the procurement departments that are responsible for giving out contracts, should know that their hands are stained with blood. Guys, who is going to bail the Gambian cart? What we are seeing in this country, trust me, it's not good and it's not going to spell good for all of us. Collectively, whether you can afford to go to a private clinic or not. Because if your mate cannot go to a private clinic, gets sick, goes to the hospital and get infected in the hospital and come back to your house, it becomes zero sum. It means we are all suffering and it's that suffering we need to stop. Stopping that suffering starts with us really putting pressure on this government. Kudos to Ms. Kasama of the hospital or the healthcare system for coming out. And also we are giving a warning to the government. No reprisal on Ms. Kasama. Anything that happens to her as it relates to her employment, the whole country will get up and we are going to come to her aid. It's high time we as Gambians protect the likes of Ms. Kasama because this lady on broad daylight stood and stated it as it is. And I think that is food for thought and that's good enough reason for us to get up and walk the last mile for her. She is frustrated in her workplace and no amount of salary increment is going to make that lady happy because her conditions of work are appalling. Her conditions of work are atrocious and this is what the country needs to fix. Not salaries. Salaries are good but people are not motivated to work because the environment is not conducive. And the reason the environment is not conducive, our technical class have turned themselves into politicians, starting with the Minister of Health. If the Minister of Health happens to ha wear political lenses rather than technical lenses, that ministry is doomed and that's where we have found ourselves. So it's only the likes of Ms. Kasama and other patriots who will come out and state it as it is so that we will know what's happening in there because we are not privy. But now since we are privy, we need to get up and make sure that something is done. If not, we are as complicit as the very public servant who were uh, diverting our funds, misplacing the priorities of the government and putting monies where they should not put them, our monies. So what we need right now is to ask for the resignation of the Minister of Health to start with. 
the Ministry of Health needs to give way. Gambians, friends of the Gambia, and my brothers and sisters in the diaspora, health is the backbone of any country that wants to develop. Having a Minister of Health who is not fit for purpose, i.e., is indifferent to what is happening in his sector, has no place in that ministry. And it's time we Gambians get up. Yes, we don't appoint him. It's the president who appoints him. But we can tell the president, if the president doesn't want to do something, he is jointly and severally liable for the indifference that is happening in the health sector. Guys, we are playing with our lives collectively. Every now and then, we have a friend, we have an acquaintance, we have a neighbor who dies all because of negligence, ineptitude within the healthcare system of this country. That cannot continue. If it continues, then we are also part of the problem. And we should not allow ourselves to be part of the problem. We should be part of the solution. And being part of the solution starts with us voicing it out, starts with us amplifying what we see that is wrong. It starts with us telling this government business as usual cannot continue. The way things are happening in this country cannot continue. It's not sustainable and it must come to a stop. Just because we don't use our public health facilities don't mean that we should be, you know, oblivious of what's happening there. We need to get up. We need to speak up. We need to act. But in acting, it's just not a few. We need a collective concerted effort by Gambians. Because today, it may be my neighbor using the healthcare facilities of the government. Tomorrow, it may be me. And then, where will I be? Maybe at the Joshua Cemetery. And that's what I need to avoid. That's what you need to avoid. That's what we collectively need to avoid to make sure that the Gambian gets a dignified livelihood, to make sure that we have a decent living condition, especially as it relates to access to health care. Let us tell this government that we don't want roads, we want to be healthy. They have spent in excess of $35 million fixing Banjul, and I haven't seen what's been fixed that's worth fixing in a ghetto. Sorry for my language, and no offense to the people who live in Banjul, because I am also a Banjulian. But the state that the Banjul infrastructure is right now doesn't need a cosmetic facelift. It needs a structural overhaul. And that structural overhaul starts with the redesign and fortifying Banjul because of its low-lying nature before we think about doing the road projects. Let us be serious about fixing our country. Fixing our country is not makeup. It's not a cosmetic art. It's a structural art that needs people who are not looking for people to pat them on the back, but people who are looking for posterity to rem you know, remember them for what they stand for. What we need is not roads. What we need it's not for people to come and tell us, I will pre-finance a project. God, let them go and pre-finance a hospital. Let them go and pre-finance equipment that goes in a hospital. Let them go and pre-finance our education system if they are serious entrepreneurs. Not cowboys who want to come and fleece an ailing country like ours. Shame to all who partake in fleecing this country. Shame to all who believe that public infrastructure is a way to personal enrichment. Shame to all who believe high ticket, you know, contracts such as road construction will give them big kickbacks. When crime goes up, those people will be, as bad as I am, victims of crime. Nobody wins in such a dispensation. And that's why we want our country to be freed from the clutches and hands of this tasteless, you know, people who are not remorseful at all, people who have no conscience, people who don't feel the plight of the poor. 
by robbing and looting the state unabated. That's why we want a change in this country. That's why we want a meaningful transition so that we can strengthen the institutions of state. We can strengthen the laws, especially that of procurement and others, so that the type of things that are happening here, Yama Nehma Johla Marse, will come to an end. The frustration of the Gambian is justified. The frustration of the Gambian should be a sympathetic cause to any well-meaning Gambian to get up and be part of the change we want. We are suffering. What we are living under today is not a dignified livelihood. Yes, it's not a life of servitude, but it's not a life of dignity either. So therefore, let's rise up. Let's wise up. Let us all go out and register and let us also push and pressure our government to allow our diasporan brothers and sisters to vote because they are part of the solution and they have been part of the solution for far too long. If any group of Gambians have suffered the most financially and physically, I will say it's the diasporan because they have been bankrolling us when our economy has been down. They have been bankrolling us when we were in need and they have also put their lives on the line to make sure that us who live on the ground happen to have a better life. There are many Gambians out there, they are even yet to come home and they have sponsored significantly in terms of bringing about change. So to whom much is given, much is expected. Therefore, we the Gambians on the ground, we should make the case for our brothers and sisters in the diaspora to make sure that they are part of, you know, the people who are going to have a chance to come out and vote. If not, I believe then we are part of the problem and I don't think we want to be part of the problem. So ignorance sometimes is our problem. But what we need right now is to make sure that we put pressure on our government to allow our diasporan brothers and sisters to have a say on how this country is managed, to have their word because their word is meaningful to us because they have played a considerable role in getting us this far. But yes, we are yet not out of the woods because we lack leadership. We lack visionary people who are willing to transform this country. Therefore, we are all duty bound to make sure that the change we want, the change we deserve, the change we dreamt of is realized. And surely it's not going to be realized under this administration because it's been over 48 months going 60 and nothing meaningful has been registered that will be shown as significant towards our collective stride for a better Gambia. I therefore urge all of us to put pressure and start with making sure that the current Minister of Health is put out of circulation because he is not fit for purpose. I have nothing personal against him. By the way, he's been my schoolmate. I grew up with him. But it's not personal. Mr. Samate, it's not personal. And I don't want to know the load you're carrying. But whatever load you're carrying, there are many Gambians who ended up in that dead house that didn't belong there, but they were there because of criminal negligence and professional negligence. Professional negligence in the sense that people who do procurement are not doing effective procurement and the hospital is running out of gloves, the hospital is running out of consumables, and that is not acceptable. Criminal negligence in the part of people who are not prioritizing the little resources this country happens to have to put it into our health care, into our education, and into our personal welfare, i.e. our living standards. But rather, they are putting it in roads because these roads will give them kickbacks. I say no to that, and we all should say no to that, and we should also make sure that we put pressure on the president of this country to find a way to get us someone at our health department because a healthy nation is a productive nation and we want to be productive. We want to get to the promised land. We can't get to the promised land if we are not healthy. So God bless you all. God bless the people of this republic, but God only bless people who get up and fight for themselves. And we Gambians need to get up and start fighting for ourselves because we are not fighting for ourselves. If we were fighting for ourselves, the nonsense that's happening, the utter disregard 
towards our collective good won't happen. On that note, thank you to all, and to The Gambia, I shall and will forever remain true. Thank you.